Welcome back to another rad video. It, as always, is great to see you. Let us get into this differential equation. We're again going to solve with separation of variables, but this time we're asked to state the domain. So I've actually, well, I use Desmos, which is fantastic, desmos.com, to create this slope field right here. And we're going to use that to explain why the domain is what it is. So we'll get to stating the domain at the end. So we're going to solve like normal, separate the variables. That's going to be dy over y equals dx over x. Multiply both sides by dx, well, divide both sides by y, and then we're going to integrate. So dy over y is the ln of the absolute value of y. That's equal to the ln of the absolute value of x, interesting one, plus c. Now at this point, again, you can certainly plug in your values to solve, but not what I'm a fan of at this point. I'm going to just exponentiate both sides, right, just to get y alone, because that's our goal. That undoes the ln. That gives me the absolute value of y equals the absolute value of x. Huh. Times c. You might be like, why times c? Let me show you. When we undid this, this was e to the ln of the absolute value of x times e to the c e to the c became that constant. You could call it a different letter if you want to, but it's perfectly acceptable to do that. When we undo the absolute value of y, that's the absolute value of y, it would be plus or minus c, which is, again, just some constant times the absolute value of x. OK, here we go. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my initial condition, 1, negative 2, to solve for c. So negative 2 is y, and that's equal to c times 1. So c has to be equal to negative 2. We plug that back in, and we get y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x. So that's a pretty quick problem right there, right? Pretty darn quick. So what do we do about this domain part now that we've gotten our particular solution? Well, the domain's an interesting one. Since we have a domain split, right? what you look for is places where the derivative or your solution is undefined. Now our solution is defined everywhere. We have no problems. But the derivative, the differential equation, had an issue at x equals 0. right? So x equals 0 is the place where we're going to split our domain. And since we're told that the solution curve has a point at 1, negative 2, we know that we have a point at, yeah, that's 1, negative 2. Let's try that again. At 1, negative 2, we know that our curve at least operates on this side of the graph. But as a slope field, when we get here, there is no way of knowing what quadrant we're going to be in. Because I'm not given another initial condition that says, oh, it's negative 1, 2, or negative 1, negative 4, or whatever it might be. So when I get to the wall that it are these vertical tangent lines, right, where we have numbers over 0, I can't go any further. I don't know whether to go up, down, so I'm lost. So my domain is split where I'm undefined. and so. Because we are given a point on the right side, the domain is x is greater than 0. It can't be equal to it because the differential equation is undefined. So you look for where the derivative, the differential equation, is undefined or the answer. And whatever side of that answer your initial condition is on, that's where your domain is. So we've got all x values greater than 0 since 1 is on the right side. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty neat. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of bonus material in here. I want to show you why the constant of integration is absorbed. So why does it absorb certain operations? Because we have this plus or minus. It goes into the C in that last problem that we did there, right? It just got sucked into it right there, right, from here to here. And here, E to the C just became C. So I want to go over why that makes a lot of sense with this problem. So we're going to separate variables like normal. And you get dy over y, and that's equal to x dx. We're going to integrate both sides, and you get ln of y. You actually don't have to technically show the integration on the A, B, or B, C exam. And that's equal to x squared over 2 plus c. OK, enter in c. Here's why it gets absorbed. The next step is we're going to exponentiate both sides. right? So now I'm going to not absorb. I'm going to just keep it all together. right? So that would give me the absolute value of y equals e to the x squared over 2 times e to the c. Because they're both exponents now and they're being added, you'd have times e to the c. To undo the absolute value of y, remember, if that's equal to some number, that's equal to plus or minus 2. So to undo the absolute value, we get y equals plus or minus. I'm going to put the e to the c in the front. 
I'm not absorbing anything in this one, so I can show you how and why it works. Now, when you go to actually solve this one out, there's a couple of reasons why things get absorbed. Number one, the plus or minus gets absorbed because you're going to determine what the plus or minus is based on the initial condition. It's got to be plus because we're going to get out a positive value of 5. But the initial condition would determine that for you anyway, so we don't need the plus or minus. right? Because whether we leave it in there or not, when we go to plug in 0, 5, it's automatically going to be a positive number. If it was a negative number, it would automatically be negative. So that's the reason why we don't need the plus or minus. So now on to the e to the c. The reason why we can just look at this and say, you know what, I'm just going to call that a variable, this whole thing, we'll let it equal to c. In fact, I'll let it equal to k to be a different variable. The reason why I can just do that is when we go to solve this out, think about this for a second, I would have to take, after plugging in, watch this, after plugging in 5 for y, we'd still have e to the c, times e to the x squared, that's 0. Watch what happens. We get 5 equals e to the c. You'd solve both sides by taking the ln, right? So that's going to be equal to c. But then I'd have to plug it back in here anyway with ln 5. So you end up with e to the ln 5. You're taking the ln of both sides only to then exponentiate it anyway. You undo what's been done. And that's why, again, it just remains the constant. And you technically could just leave it as c. Right? I called it k. That is a snapshot into why c seems to absorb things. The only time where c doesn't absorb things is in a situation where the operation's not being done explicitly only to c. We'll see that actually in one of the exercises. All right, so I wanted to show that to you. If that helps you, great. If not, and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to memorize the process. That's fine. This is why it works, and that's powerful. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.